Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now, up till now, I discuss uh, mostly on uh, this. Uh, we uh, we started with uh, uh, this uh, reaction kinetics. Then uh, we we started and we discussed the reactant analysis. Then we so we discussed the enzymatic reaction kinetics. Then we also discussed the mobilized enzyme system. Then microbial system, uh, cell growth, substrate degradation and product formation. And uh, last uh, two uh, lectures I concentrated on scale up of bioreactors. Now, this, uh, this present lecture plays uh, this is a very important aspect as per bioprocess is concerned. This is the transport phenomena in bioprocess. Now, transport phenomena the term itself tell kind of transportation and the kind of transport that you know how taking place. Now, there are different type of transport that take place in the bioprocesses. So, we, that can be divided into three different types. One is called momentum transfer, another is called heat transfer, another we call, we call uh, the mass transfer. The, the, you know, the, there are different type of transfer processes we have and we try to discuss how this process plays uh, the important role in this uh, in this uh, biochemical process. As for example, that <coughs> mass transfer process uh, particularly I can tell you plays the important role as per uh, biochemical that aerobic fermentation process is concerned because I told you that major limiting factors for the aerobic fermentation process is the dissolve oxygen concentration. So, uh, so uh, since oxygen is sparingly soluble in, uh, in water, so um, we shall have to increase the solubility by that you know uh, uh, the dissolve oxygen concentration that directly related with the mass transfer that you know how you can um, uh, we can do that. Another important aspect is the heat transfer because as you know that uh, that uh, that uh, any kind of fermentation process that uh, the, the the microorganism they are very sensitive to the environment and uh, since they are very sensitive to the environment that uh, what you what you have that uh, um, that uh, any kind of temperature if uh, you, we shall have to maintain a particular temperature so that your organism can give the maximum uh, performance in the in the reactor because if you're if your organism work well, then and only then you can expect the desired amount of product formation to the extent you are expected. So, so to maintain the temperature, naturally the heat transfer plays very important role. And as as you know that in the biochemical processes, that most most of the processes they are they are exothermic in nature. Now exothermic means the heat liberating. Am I right? So, heat liberating that means uh, there is every possibility <coughs> that temperature rises, but, but you know that uh, in case of uh, summer uh, what is the what is happening uh, since we are in the tropical country our ambient temperature increases as high as 40, 45 degrees centigrade and maybe our fermenter temperature required uh, maybe 33 or 30, 35 degrees centigrade. So, it is quite less. So, you know the, the so question comes that the cooling effect that requirement will be more. So, we shall have to pa pass some kind of chilled water just to control the or you know we shall have to pass more water as the, the so that temperature we can maintain. Now, in case of winter the ambient temperature may be may, may fall as low as 15 degree centigrade then also you have to increase the temperature to some extent because there will be always some kind of heat loss that take place in the in the fermenter. So, so, the, so heat transfer plays very important role and momentum transfer also plays very important role because because uh, because you know that you have to when you when you when you study any kind of any kind of 
uh, fermentation process, you have to keep the cells in suspension and for the suspension of the cell, you have to use a kind of starter so that you know the cells remain suspended and freely interact with the substrate and give the product. Now, let me start with this that uh, this uh, to, <coughs> to the subject deals with the movement of different physical quantities in, in any chemical and biochemical processes. So, that is the movement I told you three type of movement is there as a momentum, heat transfer and also you have mass transfer. Now, describe the basic principle and law of transport and also describe the relation and similarity among the different type of transport that may occur in any system. Let us, uh, let us see the classification of the transport phenomena. This is the classification of that. We have three different classification, momentum transport, energy transport and the mass transport. What is momentum transport? It deals with the transport um, of momentum of fluid and is also known as fluid dynamics. For example, blood circulation in the body, mixing phenomena in the bioreactor, both, uh, both, uh, both uh, that uh, uh, comes under the momentum transfer, because uh, this is uh, th this is very easy to understand the mixing phenomena I just explained. The energy transport deals with uh, the, the transport of different form of energy in, in a system and is also known that heat transfer as for example, sterilization because I forgot to mention the sterility of the reactor is very important because we want to grow our desired organism in a particular environment so that we can get the desired product and also temperature control in the bioreactor just I pointed out that uh, organisms are very specific with respect to temperature at a particular temperature they give the maximum product. Mass transfer deals with the transport of various chemical spaces themselves and also known as mass transfer as for example, oxygen transferred from the bubble to the aerobic microorganism. So, you know that uh, the, from this we can easily understand how crucial is the transport phenomena as per biochemical processes are concerned. Now, uh, when you when you try to solve it, we come across different physical quantities. Am I right? And what is the one is scalar? Scalar means it has uh, some values. You know, as for example, temperature, pressure, and concentration. But vectors they have some direction, velocity, and uh, momentum and force. And second order uh, tensor is the strength or momentum flux and velocity gradient. So these are the different quantities will be using during describing this transport phenomena. Now, if you look at that uh, three level study, one is macroscopic level, another microscopic level and the molecular level. Now, macroscopic level that the inside the fermenter, what is happening if you study something like this and uh, we now here inside that the you might be using some kind of uh, cell or in a particular, uh, particular portion of the liquid you want to study in details then we have we have this microscopic analysis and then molecular level means how the molecules inside this uh, cell they are they are they are interacting with each other and um, give the product so you know that three different level of studies are there now uh, three uh, axioms axioms are there mass is conserved uh, which is lead to equation of continuity. Momentum is conserved with leads to equation of mo motion and, uh, and energy is conserved with lead to equation of uh, thermal energy. So, three mm, this is this is this three equation collectively called governing equation. So, this uh, the all this uh, uh, this uh, on the basis of mass, uh, mass conservation on the basis of momentum conservation on the basis of energy conservation that we can we can try to solve this. <coughs> now, general statement of transport processes, now how you can do that? Rate of transport process is the driving force, but as it defined by resistance. So, you know driving force means suppose uh, you now you want to heat some liquid. So, what is the driving force? The driving force is the temperature difference and resistance is the media that you know they, they hinders that you know that uh, uh, that uh, <coughs> that uh, flow of the uh, that uh, heat. So, you know that uh, 
Now, uh, that you know, this driving force I can uh, we can explain like this factors make a uh, that the driving force is the momentum transport is the velocity gradient and uh, microscopic uh, it may be microscopic molecular and velocity difference the, the, the momentum as I understand that uh, mass into velocity am I right. So, so if the, the mass is the, the, the velocity gradient that plays very important role energy transport is the temperature gradient the, the we know MST, MST is what that you know mass is specific heat and temperature. The temperature gradient plays very important role and driving force is the mass transfer is the concentration gradient like we, we can we can K L A into C star minus C L that this is the gradient and here also here if what is the gradient T 2 minus T 1 this is the gradient this here may be V 2 minus V 1 that is this is the gradient that forces we have. The resistance factor which will slow down the transport the purpose of resistance means is slow down the kind of transport processes. As I as I point out very interesting that a mechanism of transportation that momentum heat and mass transfer phenomena usually take place by two different means molecular transfer and, uh, and what you call convective uh, tra transfer. And in case of heat transfer another mode of transport is there what you call radiation which is not applicable in case of um, in case of this uh, mass and uh, in case of momentum transfer. The radiation transfer is applicable only in case of heat transfer and this is not uh, uh, no, it is not much important for momentum and mass transfer phenomena. Now, let me explain uh, more uh, uh, elaborately that uh, what do you mean by that. Then the let us I can I can give a small example that uh, I can give a small example suppose there is a there is a uh, 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 fire take place here this is fire. So, we want to uh, extinguish the fire. So, it can be fire can be extinguished uh, that three different phenomena one is suppose uh, we know water is the best media through which we can extinguish the fire. So, we have bucket this bucket of water I can transfer in three different means how we can we have one person can uh, person can carry this one directly to this field another the different person they can stand here and they can hand over this uh, bucket to one after another and transfer here and another we, we can use a pump here we can use a pump and with the help of pump we can pass this water. So, three different means we can we can do that. Now, if you look at uh, look at three different means at three different purpose. Now, here that uh, that you know that uh, person is physically moving with the material am I right this is with the material they are moving, uh, but here the person is not moving, but materials is moving that 1 plus 2 to 3 they like this. And here uh, the you are you are you are you are you are you are with the help of pump you are you are doing this. So, this is this particular pumping this can be explained with the help of mm, what you call radiation and this is this particular things this may be con considered as a conduction and this is considered as a convection. Now, molecular momentum if you if you if you uh, uh, transfer how you can calculate suppose there is a two plates this is the two plates this is one plates and one plates the water is it is there stagnant water is there all of a sudden you move this bottom plates then what will happen the velocity of the layer fluid will be like this it will be the profile will be like this. This can be explained that uh, uh, with the help of neutral law of viscosity this is the shear stress am I right and this is the shear rate. So, this is equal to mu into this and what is mu? Mu is considered the viscosity of the liquid. So, viscosity is basically nothing but shear stress by shear rate. The viscosity is the proportionally constant of the neutral law of viscosity measurement of resistance is gradually deformation of the shear stress. For example, honey has much higher viscosity than water and uh, and, uh, and also has a dynamic viscosity. So, here if you if you look at that uh, you know pouring of water this is water is pouring this is water 
and this is honey. Am I right? The honey has higher viscosity, so it is, it is way it is spreading. It is a different way, you know that, and this is spreading very easily. So this is how we can explain that. Now momentum, as I pointed out, this is equal to mass into velocity. What is the unit of mass? Kg. And what is the unit of velocity? That is mass per unit time. So this is how we get then mass flux. The flux is always with respect to per unit surface area. So if the kg uh, kg meter per second, uh, then kg per meter second is the newton newton per second. And this is usually expressed as Pascal. Now shear shear stress that you know this is I told you this is shear stress is nothing but newton per unit surface area. This is Pascal, and this is the, the velocity. V x is the direction because you know that if you if you if you look at uh, this uh, direction of flow, maybe of this is x. This uh, this might be y or you know this might be z, and this might be y. That you know the the different uh, direction it can it can it can move. So this is the x direction. Y is uh, the, that uh, y is mean meter, and uh, viscosity is equal to Pascal per unit uh, meter per second uh, and meters in is the Pascal second. Now similarly we can we can we can find out the what should be the unit for viscosity that uh, this is I told you this is shear for shear stress by shear rate if you if you give you will get this equation. Now Newtonian fluid uh, what do you mean by Newtonian fluid fluid which obeys the Newton law of viscosity that uh, all gases most liquid which have simpler molecular formula and lower molecular weight such as uh, water benzene ethyl alcohol uh, carbon tetrachloride hexane and most uh, solutions of simple molecules are newtonian fluid so this is uh, this is how newtonian fluid can be uh, defined now this is very important that you know if you if you if you, if you plot uh, this is uh, shear stress versus the shear rate if you if you plot and this is for this this will be for newtonian liquid and this uh, this is for non newtonian liquid this all are non newtonian liquid so uh, what is non newtonian liquid or fluid the fluid which do not obey the newton law of viscosity called the non newtonian fluid generally non newtonian fluids are complex mixture slurry paste gels polymer solution all considered uh, here we have given the example of uh, bimham plastics this is actually uh, happen in case of fermentation broth fermentation broth uh, some fermentation broth they behave like bimham plastics so this is also a non newtonian fluid it is not newtonian if it newtonian it will follow this one now convective momentum transfer that uh, I, I already explained to you what is convective the transportation can be done from the bulk flow of the fluid and uh, that you know that uh, fluid center has the velocity v x then the momentum will be what this is v x into rho the v x into rho into v uh, what is the rho into v rho into v v is the volume here rho, rho volume and rho is the mass per unit volume am i right mass per unit volume and this is volume so volume volume will cancel this will be mass the mass into velocity is the is the is the what you call momentum flux per unit volume that can be explained similarly the velocity y and z direction we can we can have the momentum flux like this v y uh, rho a b and v z rho b this we can we know that the flux when multiply this the by the area perpendicular we can calculate the force this is i have already shown you before there are different boundary conditions that we have uh, in this uh, what you call solid liquid interface that there will be no slip flow and in case of liquid liquid interface the, the free slip flow is there and gas liquid interface the shear stress of the gas liquid interface uh, will will be zero that is uh, that is the, that is how what the, what the that is the boundary condition that we have. The now let us let us calculate the, the flow of the fluid through the circular tubes. Okay, that is the cavity flow. Now let the fluid constant uh, has the fluid constant density rho and the viscosity mu. 
uh, be flowing in the circular tube of radius uh, radius r capital r and length l let us consider the fluid is moving in the z direction and hence v z is considered v z is the that velocity in the direction of z now uh, the flow of the circular tube the assumption following assumptions we made one is steady state condition lamellar flow we know that lamellar flow occurs when the reynolds number is less than 2100 if uh, so i i can tell you that uh, 200 uh, uh, 10 to 4000 it is transient you know the neither lamellar no nor you know uh, non lamellar flow that non newtonian flow uh, but below that it is newtonian flow at 4000 we have turbulent flow this is lamellar flow is the less than uh, 2100 the in incompressible fluid the density is constant and viscosity also constant so on unidirectional flow liquid flow only in the z direction the v theta equal to 0 and v r equal to 0 newtonian fluid no the no slip between the liquid and solid surface of the wall no end effect the the disturbances of the flow of the liquid at the edge at the z equal to 0 z equal to l are neglected and flow of the liquid in under gravity only the these are the couple of assumption we made to analyze this fluid now let me explain that flow through the circular tube now under this assumption that a jet momentum is considered as follows <coughs> that uh, momentum uh, molecular momentum flux is the tau r z and uh, the th theta z equal to 0 and z z equal to 0 that we assume then here we 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 all also consider a segment you can see that uh, segment this is the del r we consider so just to integrate from r to r yeah. so uh, so following uh, follow the flow through the circular tube can be explained as rate of mol molecular momentum in across the cylindrical surface r rate of mo molecular momentum out across the cylinder r plus r uh, del r and plus gravity force acting on the fluid that should be equal to 0. Now, rate of molecular momentum in can be explained like this. This is the surface area am I right? This is per unit surface area. So, tau r z this is r then this is the r plus del r and this is the gravitational this is rho g you multiplied you will get the gravitational force acting on the g direction of the fluid. Now, combining this uh, whole equation we will get this this whole equation we will get this this is equal to 0. Now, we divide by twice by del r into l and taking del r tends to 0 we get this differential equation that we that will simplify the r rho into g. Then we by through integration that if you if you look at here this is like this now if you do the integration here then what we will get this is equal to c 1 is the constant am I right this is constant. <coughs> then uh, this is equal to this is uh, if you divide by r you will get this equation where c 1 is the integration constant. So, flow through the circular tube what is happening if r equal to 0 if r equal to 0 center of the tube the the fluid velocity will be maximum. Suppose this is the tube and you know that uh, in the velocity is the maximum here why it is velocity where uh, you have less friction as you come to the close to the wall there will be friction between wall and the liquid. So, you know that the velocity will be, will be affected. So, physically the molecular momentum that flux that is the uh, tau uh, r z will be finite at the center of the tube. Now, flow through the again we can find out the uh, the boundary conditions like this r equal to 0 tau uh, r z uh, finite I told you and c 1 uh, it must be equal to 0 otherwise the momentum flux will be infinity at the center of the tube. Therefore, 
we can write this is equal to r tau r z equal to r by 2 rho into z. Applying the uh, Newton's law of viscosity, we can find out this is equal to that uh, that uh, we know this is now this is already we have seen. Now, we can write this equal to this we can write this that is exactly what we have shown here and this is like this then we can derive this equation that V z equal to then again this is C 2 is the integration constant. Then again we if we applied the boundary conditions here r equal to small r equal to capital R I showed you the small r here and capital R here then uh, V z equal to 0 then the equation will be this and then R C 2 will be this then combine this we will get this equation and final equation will be if you take this common your final equation will be this. Now, flow through the circular tube the velocity profile in the lamina for incompressible liquid Newton flow this is the this is the velocity profile because what I want to show this is suppose the liquid is flowing through this pipeline. So, it will be having like this. Now, why? Because you know this is exactly what if I as the liquid comes close the wall of the tube, there will be friction between liquid and the and the and the and the wall. So, your velocity will be retarded. So, this is the parabolic velocity distribution that we will obtain. The one important uh, parameter that is used uh, to characterize the flow characteristics of the fluid that is the Reynolds number and Reynolds number can be explained as d u rho by mu am I right. So, this is d u we considered as a inertial inertia force and mu by rho we consider as the viscous force. So, it, the Reynolds number is nothing but that um, the ratio between the inertia force and the viscous force. Now, I was telling like this that you know if the Reynolds number less than uh, 2100 is lamellar flow, it is more than 4000 we call it turbulent flow and transition flow is if it lies in between it is neither lamellar flow nor turbulent flow this is in between 2100 to 4000. This is the pattern that we have that is in case of lamellar flow clearly we can see the velocity gradient and this velocity gradient can be minimized when we have the turbulent flow when have if the velocity of the fluid is maximum then the you can, you can see the here the velocity gradient is reduced to a great extent as compared to uh, this the lamellar flow. In this particular lecture we try to cover a new topic that is transport phenomena in the bioprocess and I told you transport phenomena plays very important role as the in the biological process because it has three different uh, approaches one is momentum transfer and the heat transfer and the mass transfer. And uh, basically that uh, uh, that momentum transfer is uh, applicable for the mixing of the fluid because which is very much required as far biochemical industries is concerned because how the cells are remain suspension how you add uh, some kind of media that you know ingredients to the media how quickly the disperse. Then, uh, then we have heat transfer because organisms are very sensitive to temperature. So, temperature is to be maintained that uh, the uh, heat transfer plays very important role and mass transfer I told you the aerobic fermentation process we required to have proper dissolved oxygen concentration for the growth of the microorganism because the oxygens are sparingly soluble in, in, the, in, the, in the water. So, all these uh, transport phenomena can be explained. Uh, but, but the first uh, in this particular lecture I try to discuss the momentum transfer how different parameters involve uh, with this particular things and we try to correlate uh, we try to, uh, to uh, take out we try to find out what is viscosity. Viscosity of the fluid is nothing but ratio of shear stress by shear rate then we, uh, we, we try to analyze the system when uh, it passes through the cylindrical. Uh, 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 tubes and then finally I try to um, try to point out that uh, uh, that they do how uh, the how the Reynolds number uh, influence the flow characteristics of the fluid. If the Reynolds number is less than 2100 we call it lamellar flow. If it is more than 4000 we call it turbulent flow. And if it is lies in between 2001 
hundred and four to four thousand we call it uh, the transition flow. Thank you very much.